I'm Dr. Pete Economo, the East Coast psychologist. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin, the West Coast psychologist. And this is When East Meets West. Control is something that a lot of us like and we don't want to let go. Today, Nikki and I, we're going to be talking about control. We are, and I'm obviously already chuckling a little bit because <laughs> because, <laughs> because Pete and I, mm, we... We I like me are, some control. Yeah, we like we <laughs> we like some control. Um, we admit it, though, right? Yeah. We're aware of it. We work on it here, yeah. right? We're. I mean, I would say not always. I wasn't always so aware of my uh, control. Well, I feel like I. I mean, certainly during grad school, I became aware of it. You know, more so. Sure. Right. Yeah. And and thinking about because I think so as a diagnostic perspective in the West, we have mm-hmm. OCD or OCPD, so obsessive compulsive disorder or obsessive compulsive mm-hmm. uh, personality, personality disorder. disorder. Mm-hmm. And so those are two things that I think when I learned that it helped me differentiate and it helped me accept a bit more of my controlling <laughs> right. aspect of myself right. As, right. A, as I own perhaps. <laughs> There was a personality aspect to me, it, <laughs> and I was okay with that. I, well, I, I would say I, I, I'm going to gently disagree. I don't think it's a personality. I, I think that uh, yeah. what, where Pete and I are similar, and I think a lot of people are, is that, yeah. um, and what uh, both of us became more aware of in grad school, because same for me as well, is that when, when we're feeling anxious, grad school is a really anxiety-inducing time. Yeah. Uh, uh, for those of you, uh, other uh, folks who've gone through um, – <laughs> just know. any school really you know, but yeah, any totally. school yeah any school any school true yeah. um you know feel that level of of dysregulation you start to realize like i really want to uh, ground down some way and the way that we tend to try to ground down PS doesn't work uh, <laughs> is, fast forward to is, the ending of this movie <laughs> right right <laughs> is like I'm gonna make sure I do everything right I'm gonna make sure everything goes a certain way and yeah it's yeah. uh, not fun. No, and I think so. So, are you saying there, like, where do you think it stems from? Like, where do you think people start to develop control? Because I, you know, I don't know. My my mom was certainly not controlling. My dad was definitely controlling. And thinking about it from that perspective, but where do you think it really stems from? Well, oh, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go real Western behavioral science here because that's yeah, okay. <laughs> well, as I say, similar to what I talked about in our perfect, perfectionism episode, because um, there's some overlap here talking about control. Yes, um, it is. I yeah. think at, every human struggles with control oriented strategies. Yeah. So obviously, there are folks <laughs> like Pete and myself that that might struggle with it a little bit more um, than others, but everybody does. And so, where does it stem from? It stems from this behavioral tendency that's known um, in behavioral science as experiential avoidance. Um, So that's kind of like a fancy sounding term that I'll define for our listeners here. So basically what experiential avoidance means is human beings try really, really hard to actively fix, control, get rid of, ignore, suppress, figure out unpleasant internal experiences. And what are some unpleasant internal experiences? Physical Anxiety, sensations, physical um, yes, sensations. Um, yes, emotions, urges, memories, and thoughts, yeah. right? So where does it stem from? Well, it stems from our really, really <laughs> annoying brains that think they can figure everything Don't out. Don't call my brain annoying. <laughs> Well, and there's also different types of control, and I think that that's yeah. important. So that yeah. there's there's like emotional control, cognitive control, um, you know, social control. So yes. you're describing here the um, experiential avoidance related to a lot of emotional control because if we don't want to experience something, you know, we're trying to we're trying to avoid it. Uh, but yes. there's, other, but there's it's across any aspect of a human existence. We correct. We, yeah, and then the other psychological term is perceived control, right? Because we mm-hmm. think that we have control. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, this is, and this is something I say a lot to patients that I know, I know Pete doesn't love that I say it this way, but I, I, it makes a lot of sense to me. So I'll say it, Just which say is, it. I'll say, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say too, is what I tell people all the time is um, to the point about perceived control is that as humans, we love to focus on everything that we don't control, which is the things I just mentioned, all these internal experiences, right? We don't control what shows up in our body or in our minds. We don't control events in the world. We don't control what other people do or say or think, but we try to control those things, right? Right. We try to control outcomes. We try to control what people do. And I say there is something that we control, 
yeah. or maybe another way to say it, maybe Pete, you'll like this better, something that we have agency over. Which I'll tell you is, my verb, but go ahead. Okay, I want to hear it in a minute, is our own behavior. And yeah, behavior yeah. includes, as we've talked about in the podcast before, overt behavior, things people can see you doing, and covert behavior, things you're doing inside your body. But we don't want to focus on that as humans. We're like, nope, I want to make sure my you know, picks up his towels off the floor after, <laughs> after he gets off the, out of the shower, right? Yeah, yeah. And let's control that. And a lot of times that's yeah. because there's another issue going on in the world, right? Or, or in their yes. world or their internal experience that creates yes. that sort of outward, overt uh, yes. control. The word I like, Nikki, is manage. Yeah, tell me. Mm, tell me why. Manage. Well, I feel like because manage has this collaborative nature, whereas control mm. is like authoritarian. So control is like, oh, interesting. I, yeah. I'm, like it's like a puppeteer, like I got you, whereas right. manages, we're going to work on this together because I think it's about accepting that that's going to be a piece of it. I, I, like, I like that. That makes sense to me. And obviously in the work that we do in cognitive behavioral therapies, we're very, um, we're very into collaboration. That's a big part of, of sort of our treatment approaches. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to another point about why I like to use the word control. Is like how, I, I tell people, I'm like, let's kind of like throw your brain a bone, yeah. right? Like you want to control, like, you know, it's like you want to yeah. control something. Yeah. And it's like, okay, like, let's be really literal. There's only one thing that you control or in Pete's words, manage in the whole universe, Thank which you. is your own behavior. You're welcome. No one way to say it here. No, exactly. Yeah, totally. and I'm sure we could think of, and listeners, find your own verb too. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I think, it, but, but Nikki, I mean, I think one other thing we can jump in here is relational frame theory. Mm-hmm. And so I think for me, control based on how that word, it's a very negative word, control. Yeah, well, well, that's interesting that you say that because I think some people view it as negative, right? Yeah. Obviously, if you hear someone say like, I'm being controlled or they're being controlling. Yeah. Though I would say that a lot of people that I work with have a real positive judgment about control because it comes back to this notion of like, I can, I can make things happen the way they're supposed to be. Like, again, we, you know, obviously I'm, re- I'm referencing a lot of our episodes here uh, because they, they all sort of uh, converge in this concept of, of control or strategies, right? It's yeah. like with uncertainty, right? We talk yeah. about this in the uncertainty episode, people think they control outcomes. And, yeah. you know, Pete and I talk a lot about that's actually something we can't do. We only, we only own the process. Yeah. We can only own what we're doing in this moment. So, well, that's you know, huge in sports world because it can't be about outcome. It's got to be about process, and that's key. So, I think I observe my desire or like yearning to control, mm-hmm. and then I refocus on the process. Well, and but what about for people that when maybe they're listening to this and they're thinking, okay, I mean, yeah, I guess I could try kind of like notice that urge and and come back. But then they have that like little part of their brains like, but you know, like I kind of like my control strategies, you know, like I kind of, I kind of feel better if I have everything neat or if I say to myself, if I, if I get the best job or the best romantic partner or I don't know, I'm trying to think. Well, then you just want the next thing after that, frankly, but that's a whole nother episode. It's a whole other episode. Sure. But what, but what do you say to those people? Because I think that's also something where people don't necessarily think of those as control oriented strategies, these thought patterns of like, I'm going to do it this way. This is how it's going to happen. Well, just practice awareness of it. I mean, for me, like, I think that's, I, I would see that as an OCPD sort of presentation. You sure. Know, not di- it doesn't have to be diagnosed. I'm just saying for the differentiation sure, sure, sure. Yeah, of sure. a behavioral strategy. Sure. Right. And so that's one of the things that we look at. And I just think, you know, I, it's not easy to let it go. And that's where mindfulness comes in. So mindfully pay attention to my desire to do things. I want to eat a lot of Oreos and I have to watch <laughs> or Domino's, right? We still have to or do no, that. I know we will have to do <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, I, I'm sure there are people listening. They hear that and are like, gagging. I know they're probably horrified. Yeah, Domino's and Oreos. We are really yeah. classy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, maybe Domino's is going to be another uh, sponsor soon. Hey. I mean, wow, we would just get I mean, that what a dream. You maybe, would love that free, actually. Free, free, free pizza for life? I mean, hello. Oh, don't don't hate that idea, so. <laughs> I'll control all the way to my yeah. free pizza. Yeah, and so again, I think in for me it's always a balance like everything else mm-hmm. and in and in Zen, so let me bring some Zen yes, into this. Please, yeah. In mm-hmm. the Buddhism world, we look at middle path and it's always about finding this middle ground to what you're doing. So I never can fully control my show, my like my social 
uh, standing, my motivation, mm -hmm. my emotion, my cognitions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to just understand that they're going to thoughts are going to be there and yes. my desire to do it. And I can try and manage those by, uh, you know, whatever strategies I can have to let them go. Because frankly, you know, so during, say during a pandemic, when I was mm -hmm. feeling really anxious at times, I would try and assert and insert a bit more control. Yeah. Because we want to create structure in what, when we're otherwise feeling very unstructured, right? Yes. And, and I, and I would say that, look, the sort of um, something important to say about that is it, it is okay when you're feeling overwhelmed or, you know, you have that, you know, everybody has that experience of feeling out of control sometimes. Like it is okay to say like, all right, I'm going to implement some structure here to, yes. you know, to help orient myself and help regulate a, a little bit. And that, you know, in, again, in, in the type of work that Pete and I do, that is something that we often do with, with people that are presenting with anxiety. It's like, okay, let me focus on, you know, sometimes it's even like organizing your desk or something like, oh, sure. again, what, what can you, you can actually control that again, or right. using Pete's language again, like you can manage that. Um, though I want to caution, you know, anyone that sort of, over relies on that, right? Because I think where people get stuck is they think that if if I just focus on making things a certain way, then everything will be okay. Things will turn out the way that I want. I can, again, like force an outcome. Because I really think that that's, I mean, I'm curious what you think about this. I think that's what this comes back to. I think, you know, yeah, you our keep control. Focusing on this idea yeah. of forcing the outcome. Yeah, because I think control oriented strategies are about yeah. making something a way that we want it to be. It's this linearness, right? Well, it's that we don't want to be uncomfortable. We want it to be okay. Yeah, and I think, well, in Buddhism, we, we sit with that. Yes. So the, the, because the, and nothing is linear. Yes. But I hear you with the outcome. And so actually, when I work with people that are trying to learn meditation, one of the first things they want is to see the benefits of it, right? Of the course, outcome. yes, I know. Let me just sit because I want to see it work. Yes. And actually, the whole teachings of Buddhism is to sit just to sit. Totally, yes. You know, and, and to let go because I think a lot of us are like, okay, you know, we've all been on a date or like out with a family member and they're like, oh, she's going to have the salmon and the, you know, uh -huh. the Pinot yep. Grigio, you know, <laughs> right, 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 so right. people are like very, you know, that's another strategy. because That's it, another it, strategy, yes. Right? Another, mm -hmm. To manage the outcome of a date, let, let's say, because I want yep. her or him to feel really loved or, yes. you know, or flowered with things. And so let me try and you know, yeah, con right. well, control, make it be this way, right? Yes, and I think exactly. so. What what you're saying about you know what um, what's uh, practiced in Buddhism, and of course, you know, in uh, you know behavioral science, we've 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 borrowed these concepts and, and applied it um, in psych our psychotherapy uh, uh, treatments that we practice. It's the same thing. It's like letting go of those behavioral strategies yes. and being open and curious to the moment and seeing what comes. And that's really hard for people. There's such vulnerability yeah. involved in that, right? It takes such willingness to to say, I'm just going to be with the discomfort. Well, yeah, that's it, the right? hard part of sitting. You know, if know. anyone does meditate with a meditation practice, it is vulnerable to just sit and, and to watch what comes up because a lot comes up. And, yes. you know, I, I, as, as I get busy, as I get into a semester, it, when I sit sometimes, some things come into my mind of like what I need to be doing like once I'm done. And so the practice is to be like, that's okay right now, I'm just sitting. And so it's this constant back and forth. It's like a pendulum. It, absolutely. absolutely. And, that's control, and that, those are control strategies. They, they come, mm -hmm. they go, they, and I don't know, I'm never going to get rid of them. You? No. Well, and that's, it's, it's, <laughs> we're having an, we're having another ESP moment uh, here, uh, Pete, coast to coast. Uh, yeah. What I was just thinking about was another thing that I often hear from patients when we're working on mindfulness or, you know, they'll come back to, you know, let's say they're, they're new to meditating. We've practiced in session, they go do it for homework and they come back and they'll say, you know, um, I did a really bad job. They'll go into judgment. Oh, really, totally. Yeah. yeah. I did a really, I just so bad because I was so distracted. Yeah. And, I, and so I have to spend a lot of time, not have to, that sounds uh, pejorative. It's not have to, it's yeah. I, 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 I want to, I, I spend time um, kind of returning to explaining the concept that it, it's, that's not a bad job, that you're not supposed to stay in the present moment. That's right. Right. That that's not the intention of mindfulness. Mindfulness. The intention of mindfulness is to just, as you said, just sit and watch. And that your brain is designed to go all over the place. And so, right. what you have again, the the control here, Pete's word again, manage. The option is how you interact with that. So when your mind goes to like 
you know, what you're going to have for lunch on Thursday, it's like, okay, my mind's going to what, my, <laughs> what I might have for lunch on Thursday. I'm going to choose to pull it back to my breath and then it's off to the races again. But yes. people people want to control it, even meaning like they want to control like, and now I'm meditating. I'm focused right. on the present. And I'm like, right. yeah, that's, that's not going to work. Actually. Well, or wanting to like please us and be like, I meditated that, for 30 minutes that, every day this too. week. And that, it's like, well, too. did you though? And, and again, it's like, if you did great, and like it's okay just, not to it's yeah. okay not to because it's that's okay there's, there's no you know there's no right or wrong way to do this and so i think you know what and also in buddhism another term that's related is this sort of self-control so mm. that we you know because there are benefits of self-control yes right? <laughs> so I mean, absolutely I, yeah. well, it's, it's well and that's um you know and that comes back to that like what are what can we do right what are yeah. the behaviors that we choose and i'm actually wondering um with the term uh self-control that's used in buddhism does that relate at all kind of like to bring in the Western concept from acceptance and commitment therapy to like sure. acting in line with your values? Like the self-control is like something important, to you, like doing things that are important to you or like, I don't know, maybe in Buddhism, it talks more about like virtues or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I want to, I want to say yes, because I think it makes sense. And it's, it's and really, it's, it's really, it's, it, <laughs> it's well, it, it's really about like self-control and there's like these five precepts, which are like refrain from killing, refrain from stealing, lying, refrain from intoxicants and from sexual misconduct. And so it's really about self-control around, I guess, pleasure or sort mm. of, I guess, in psychology, we would also call like the ego, the superego. Right, right. right? And so just trying to like manage uh, the superegos in between the ego and the... <laughs> this is where see, is. See, Pete, Pete and I are not Freudian therapists. So yeah, <laughs> we'll do, we'll talk about that another time. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I was going to say, well, <laughs> I, another way to say it, we could use more, more behavioral terms would be, um, it sounds like staying away from getting uh, emotionally dysregulated with regards to pleasant emotions. Right. Which, by the way, I, you know, I think a lot of people don't, um, recognize that comfortable and pleasant emotions get dysregulated too, right? Of people, course. Right? People know like if you're depressed or you know, yeah. like having panic symptoms, like, oh, that's, that's dysregulation or, or really intense emotion. But yeah. when people feel infatuation, right? Yeah. Like, cool. This is cool. And I'm like, passion sometimes. Again, yeah. nothing bad or good about it. I'm not judging it. It's just, it's, 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 it's middle path. It's, if yeah. anything too extreme, uh, does, doesn't, um, doesn't, is usually not healthy. And I was actually That's just thinking, right. I did an exercise, we were doing a diversity training with our faculty and I did a mindfulness exercise and I had people kind of put, put their hands in their heart mm -hmm. and think about their racial and ethnic identity mm -hmm. and, and all the emotions that comes up there. And so certainly my image in that moment was my colleagues of color mm -hmm. are likely going to have a lot of negative emotions, due, especially, you know, during a racial pandemic mm -hmm. uh, and that my white colleagues, I'm not sure what they're going to feel. Right. You know, and so I right. think that that was another thing about control is that allowing emotion to come in wherever yes. it is, because it's not always pleasant. There's going to be both pleasant and unpleasant experiences in life that that is this game called life. Absolutely. And, you know, what I was thinking as you're saying that is that people people are afraid of their unpleasant emotions, oh, though, yeah, yeah. right? Like that's yeah. why we, that's why we as humans engage in control oriented, oriented strategies. And when I say like people, I mean like all people, like Pete and I as well, right? Yeah, like, of like, you know, that even, you know, we're psychologists, we're trained in this, we, 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 we practice what we preach and our brains are afraid of discomfort, right? Like yeah. they don't want to be uncomfortable. And so, you know, this is really the downside of like having a, a, the the very evolved brains that we do Our right beautiful because, brains that you were calling that you uh, were well. <laughs> so what are some what are some strategies for control you know we have a couple minutes left if you if you think about strategies for control because one thing i think about in buddhism is we use mantras right because huh? that could help a little bit with at least creating you know this sort of re repetitive same uh, yeah say more about that say more like so how, mantra how, uh, would be it could be a prayer it could be anything that someone's related to in their religious doctrine mm -hmm. it could be just any word that they choose mm -hmm. uh, and the repetitive nature of practicing that mantra creates new neurological pathways and also just creates moment to moment awareness of just that mm -hmm. those just those words mm -hmm. and then the repetitive nature and the sort of cadence creates mm -hmm. that little piece internally so kind of anchoring someone anchoring, to the moment. Yes. Yeah. Anchoring okay. is good. Yes. What else would you say for control? So for any listeners that are maybe trying to manage their control. There well, we you know, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like uh, all roads lead to mindfulness, <laughs> yeah. honestly, right? Yeah. Um, that I think the first step is just, uh, you know, as Pete and I shared, we became more aware when we were graduate students, right? That in awareness of like where, starting to get curious around, um, which is part of awareness here in mindful, uh, mindful practice, where might you be 
engaging in control-oriented strategies to get rid of, suppress, fix, problem yeah. solve, run away from, avoid some, you know, something uncomfortable, right? right, right. Um, and you know, I think I think that's something that um, some people might be surprised about when they really start to curiously observe, because I, I'm sure there are people that are listening that like have in their minds like, oh, I know this person's super controlling in my life or I've sure. met this one. Of course. But I'm not controlling. I'm I'm super chill, right? And it's like I think look, I think if, if you guys met Peter or I, right, we we are pretty like go with the flow in a lot of ways. Like you might not like on the surface go like <laughs> they're they're controlling. Um and we're human beings. We have control oriented tr- strategies too. So I think that's like the first step is like just really openly kind of getting curious about where am I trying to to, to fix something that's uncomfortable for me. Yeah. And so I think hopefully leaders have that, uh, our listeners uh, mm. have something to take away. They could away. be leaders. They could be leaders. Yeah. They, they, should, yeah. They, they probably should be leading us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, some, yeah, some, yeah. Some more, if you're out there and you want to produce us, help us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'll leave you with this quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, who is a, you know, a, a Buddhist scholar and letting go gives us freedom and freedom is the only condition for happiness. And so that letting go is about recognizing this release of control. This has been When East Meets West. I'm Dr. Pete Economo. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin. Be present, be brave. This has been When East Meets West. All material is based on opinion and educational training of Drs. Pete Economo and Nikki Rubin. Content is for informational and educational purposes only.